Hello there fellow Kerbalnauts. Today I have a video introducing the Mun Rover 2.0. This thing is wicked. It doesn't roll as easy as my last one and is completely powered by RTGs. But that's pretty average. So is this thing a lander? This one actually has ladders as requested by someone. I forgot who that is in the forum. So they work. But that's not the only part of this ship that I will be uploading. This thing is a true Apollo 15 copy, pretty much. And it is an awesome copy. I quite love it. I quite like it myself. I've landed with just over half a tank, and this thing will easily get off the ground. That's not the only thing though. This whole spacecraft landed via this guy. If it wants to change. Yeah. Okay. After this, I will show you the entire ship. I think it contains 900, no, 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 219 parts, 900. That would kill my computer. The service module is also orbiting. Um, this thing is pretty tight for fuel, for what it is, so it's probably not a good beginner's craft. But, um... Action group for one here is to control the solar panels, which are just readjusting themselves. And this little baby is if you exit the atmosphere, right, you can get to the moon using your first stage, which is pretty cool. But, um, really, you want to preserve fuel in this thing as much as you can. It does not have any RCS for a reason. It's weight. And poor Bob's up here all alone. Nice view of the moon. While Jeb and Bill are having the time of their life on the moon's surface. And there's the little hedge. Hedge. Stone hedge. But anyway, this has got, I don't know, how much delta V? I think just under a thousand probably. Now the um the launch engine to get it up here was the same as my last one, except except instead of firing the liquid boosters in stages of three at a time, it now does two at a time, so it's a lot more fuel efficient. Um it's a pretty big craft, like I said. Undocking this rover, you must listen here. Um, to right click on that docking port and you click undock or whatever, and of course, you'll have this landing gear out. This thing will not be able to reverse out because it cannot get past these lander legs and it can't drive out forward because of this lander leg. So, you've got to sort of hover the lander, the mem. And you sort of got to shift it forwards or whatever way you want. And, um, yeah. Pretty cool design here. The escape tower, it sort of works. It works pretty well. You just got to cut the throttle to everything here, preferably. And then activate this. Also, this stage in the middle, this thing doesn't really like to go full throttle, especially with these guys here. Mainly a third throttle throttle, sorry, two-thirds throttle to half throttle will cut it, um, 
I couldn't fit any fuel tanks on top of this because of the rover, but hey, that's cool, we got a bigger rover. Uh, it can fit two Kerbals. And here are the action groups while we're here. We have the abort, which decouples this and activates all these engines. Custom 1 is for the solar panels, and custom 10 is to get rid of this abort tower. It decouples this fairing here, or decoupler, and it activates these um, separatrons, which it is very powerful for what it is. But yeah, that's the module and the launch engine and whatnot. Like I said, it's pretty tight for fuel and only 219 parts. So it's a fairly big craft, but especially with running this Unity 4 engine, it's really good. So, but I'm running a MacBook, just a standard MacBook at the moment. Um, I think it's 2 gigahertz, maybe, ish, 2.1. Um, overclocking is still the same. 2 gigahertz. Uh, the RAM, I'm not sure. But it is a very slow computer. I will just put that out there. It's my school computer. So it's not meant to run games like this. But um, the Rover does a very good job. Four wheel drive edition, dual headlights, which do not work on this terrain for my because I have my shaders or something enabled, which is really weird. I think they need to fix that. Not a big issue, but yeah, it can power everything off of the RTGs, including lights, etc. etc. The probe core is just in here, it's an Opto 2. Really cool. Quite like it. Nice little nifty rover. Kerbals fit in there just like always. Some power slide. Um, it has got batteries, I don't know why I put them there, that's pretty pointless. I think this rover has fewer parts as well. It's also got struts, so that won't really fall on four times warm. Except this bit here which I think this was kind of meant to connect to, but hey. Um, yeah, that's about all I have for you today. I will upload the craft file and put a page on the forum. Um, I'll link all them in the description. Happy flying or crashing. This is Mr. Gilly Guy signing off.